What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Under one week until the exam this year. By popular request, I'm going to work out the second example of the 2020 example questions that they posted the other day on the College Board website. I posted a video of the first example, which was this one yesterday. I'll leave that in the comments and description. You can go back and check that one out if you haven't seen that one. Today, we're going to look at the solution for the second one. It is a short answer response question, 15 minutes, five minutes to submit. Guys, as always, I'm looking at this for the first time with you guys. Although I'm pretty confident in the material, there is a slight chance I make a mistake. If I do, please leave it in the comments down below or if you think something looks fishy, we could discuss it and get to the bottom of it. So this question is going to deal with simple harmonic motion and also the vertical spring. So they give us three figures here. Here's just the spring chilling with no mass on it. When I give it a little bit of mass, this string spreads it. So we have to understand there's going to be two equilibrium points. There's the equilibrium point of the spring, but then there's also an equilibrium point where there's a mass hanging on the spring. And essentially what that tells me is unless the mass goes above this point, the restoring force is always going to be pulling. It's never going to push this mass until this thing would compress. So as long as the mass stays under L1, the restoring force is always going to be pulling upward. Then in figure three, I stretch it even further down to figure three. And then I assume we're going to let this object go and it is going to oscillate in this region of oscillation right here. So it says the student releases a block considered during the time to move the block is moving upward, okay, towards equilibrium. So that's super important. The length of the spring will be longer than L2. So it's going to be in between this region here and here during this time that we're looking at it. Indicate whether the total mechanical energy is increasing, decreasing, or saying constant. And then also explain why. So that explanation is going to be very important as well. So if I look at just the block here and then I draw a system boundary around the block, I see that there's a force FG that's coming from outside the system. And I also know that there's a force due to the spring that's acting from outside the system. So we know the system is open. So that means the mechanical energy is going to increase. If I look at B and I draw the system that they want now, so now they want the block and they want the spring. Once again, I'll draw my system boundary. Then I'm going to draw some forces to see if any forces act from outside the system. So I have F of S that is going to be acting inside the system. So that's fine. But the force of gravity is pulling from outside the system here. So once again, this is an open system. But the force that's coming from outside the system is doing negative work. Okay, The object is moving against gravity. So negative work is going to be doing. Therefore, the mechanical energy of this system is going to decrease. And granted, there was an FG down here that was doing negative work. But this force of the spring... This contributed more towards the F net, which would make the object accelerate upward. So this was doing po more positive work than this was doing negative, which has made the kinetic energy increase. Here, the kinetic energy increase was inside the system, which was being converted. Okay, So that's why the negative work is done here and mechanical energy decreases. In the third one, I have the block and then I have FG. Then I'm going to draw my system boundary. I'm going to see if there's any forces acting from outside. There is the force of the spring that's acting from outside the system. This is increasing the work in kinetic energy, so it's adding mechanical energy to the system. So here, these two forces add energy. This force takes away energy. This force increases energy. This, once again, is an open system. Just a little side note, if it were to happen to say block earth spring, so this would be block, this would be earth, and this would be spring, and this was our system boundary, this is the situation where ME would remain constant. So let's get to part D. The block is released at time zero. The length of the spring is shown in the graph above as a function of time. During which intervals, if any, is the weight force acting on the block greater than the spring force acting on the block? And explain your reasoning. Okay. So it looks like this is L3. So if I draw those springs again, that was L1, this was L2, and this was L3. L1, L2, and L3. So essentially we're starting here when the block is right there. Then what happens is it accelerates towards, this is going to be the equilibrium point, And this would be what, T over 4. And this would be 3T over 4. So that's where the equilibrium system of this is. But the equilibrium of the spring is way up here at L1. 
So like I said before, the forces acting on the block are going to be Fg and the force of the spring. These are the two forces that are going to be acting. So to understand when Fg is going to be greater than Fs, well, we just look at the acceleration in the F net of the system and see whether that acceleration is up or whether that acceleration is down. So from the interval of t to t over 4, or a quarter of time, the block is accelerating upwards. So it's accelerating towards block 2. So what is the upward force, or if we look at the net force, right? A equals F net over M, right? So what is the F net? Well, F net is going to be Fs minus Fg over M. So this has to be the thing that's winning. So from here to here, Fs is greater than Fg. Once it gets above L2, the spring force is still moving it up towards L1 in this direction, but the acceleration is negative. So from T over 4 to T over 2, acceleration is negative. Therefore, F net is downward, and the downward force is Mg. So I think from T4 to T2, Fg is greater than Fs. That's what they were looking for. So for part D, from interval t over 4 to t over 2, Fg is greater than Fs. And the reason for that is the acceleration in the negative direction. So therefore, F net is downward and the downward force is Fg. Once it gets up to L1 at t over 2, what is it then going to do? Well, once again, it is going to accelerate. So this was like, this is a position versus time graph. So right here, this is zero speed. So now we see an acceleration again in the downward direction. So from T2 to 3T over 4, we have acceleration in the downward direction as well. And I say negative direction, I'm calling up positive. So once again, the F net is downward. So from this region here, from T2 to 3T over 4, we have a situation where Fg is greater than Fs. So once again, so now I can really say from t over 4 all the way to 3t over 4, Fg is greater than Fs. Now, once it gets below L2 on the way back down to its lowest point, its speed is going to be slowing. So from 3t over 4 up to t, it's slowing. Acceleration is upward. So F net is upward. And what is the upward force? Well, the upward force is Fs. So from 3t over 4 to T, Fs is greater than Fg. So to summarize this, during which intervals, if any, is the weight force acting greater than the spring force? From T4, or from L2, up to L1, back to L2, Fg is going to be greater than Fs. And my reasoning for that is going to be because the acceleration is in the downward direction, therefore F net is in the downward direction. And in this case, on the block, the downward force, which would supply that downward F net, is Fg. Part E, when the block reaches its lowest point after oscillating several times, a student attaches a new block of mass less than M, so a small of S, to the block. All right, so there's some misconception with my students that they replace the block. They're saying that they added mass to the block without exerting any noticeable force, so we're not adding any extra energy to the system or changing the energy stored uh, in the spring at that instant. In a clear, coherent paragraph-like response, explain how the graph of length versus time will change and why. So I'm going to use this graph just to give me some reference points. This was the range of oscillation, okay? That was the range of oscillation before I added mass. And this is slightly annoying because L3 is really the lowest point, but they put it on the highest point in the graph. When it gets to the lowest point, so I'll draw the picture. When it got down here to the lowest point, L3, the spring says, hey, stop and come back the other way. Right here, V is equal to zero meters per second. So it says, all right, I'm going to accelerate the block upward. So there's going to be some acceleration upward. And how much acceleration is is going to determine how high this block comes up this way. And we know that acceleration is just F net over M total of an entire system. But now we throw a curveball at the spring. The K constant is going to remain the same. The K constant or the strength and stiffness of the spring is not going to change. Now in this new situation, the spring is used to accelerating 
just M. But now what we did is we added a little M to the bottom. So when the spring went to just pull M, it said, whoa, 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 you just added some more mass to my system. So we say A equals F net over M total. What just happened to the system? Well, M total just went up. So what's going to happen to the acceleration of the system? It is going to go down. And surprisingly, F net is going to remain the same because we see in a vertical spring, we can cancel out the MGs at the bottom of the oscillation. I'll leave a video where I derived that and showed it to you. But essentially, the spring now has to accelerate a larger mass. Now, if I accelerate at a lower rate here, the block is not going to go as high. So for the facts of my case, if A is smaller, that means that delta V is smaller. That means that final velocity is lower. That means that KE final is less. That means that gravitational potential energy is less. And UG equals MG delta H. This H is not going to be as high. So the so one thing that's going to change about this graph is the amplitude is going to decrease. Now to relate the horizontal axis, that's going to be a little bit easier because I can just look at the formula for the period of a spring is equal to 2 pi m divided by k. So I see that these aren't a direct relationship, which is okay. If I want to square both sides to get rid of the square root, t squared equals 4 pi squared m over k. I can now see that as I increase m, what's going to happen to the period? The period is going to increase as well. So not only is the amplitude, so this, this covers the vertical axis, the amplitude is going to decrease, but the period of oscillation will increase. I hope that helped, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this question, please leave them down in the comments below. If you want more solutions videos, please give the video a thumbs up. It shows me that you're getting value from the video. Until I see you in the next one, guys, stay positive. Work really, really hard. Always be kind to other people. Hope you have yourself an amazing day. Even better tomorrow.